The studio lights blazed down on Megyn Kelly as she faced the camera, her expression sharp and inquisitive. Quick question about Harry and Megyn, she began, her voice crisp with curiosity. Tom Bauer, whose barn burner of a book about the royal family was number one everywhere, was on with our mutual friend Dan Wooten talking about Harry's autobiography, which is slated for release this November. Welcome to iStudio. She leaned forward slightly, her eyes gleaming with the promise of unfolding drama. According to Dan and others, the royal family does not want to see the publication of this book. They fear and believe that it's going to be very negative about the royal family. Given the fact that the queen just died, the timing is far from ideal. So Bauer goes on with Dan during GB News's royal coverage, and here's what happens. She turned to her guest. What do you make of that, Nigel? Nigel Farage, ever the charismatic politician, chuckled lightly, leaning back in his seat with a knowing smile. Tom Bauer is the biographer of our times, he said, his voice carrying the weight of experience and insight. He's written the most incredible books about members of the royal family, about big business figures, political figures, Boris Johnson, Richard Branson, you name it. I'm very pleased that it wasn't him but somebody else who wrote a big biography about me because Tom Bauer is really good at putting his finger on those personality flaws. But we all have them, of course. We all have them. Farage's tone shifted, growing more serious. So, would Harry go ahead with this book? Well, think about this. When the Oprah Winfrey interview happened, right? Harry and Meghan knew that his grandfather was at death's door. They knew that Philip was not going to make his 100th birthday, and that was only 10 weeks away. And they still went ahead with the interview. The audience could almost feel the tension rise as Farage continued, his words cutting through the air like a knife. This trip to the UK, they came here this time, you know. Meghan gave a speech up in Manchester. They went to Dusseldorf for an event. Do you know they weren't even going to visit the Queen on this trip? I thought Charles's words in the King's speech were very interesting. He talked about Kate, or Catherine as we're now branding her, and William as the new Prince and Princess of Wales. But when he referred to Harry and Meghan, he didn't call them the Duke and Duchess of Sussex. No, 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 no. He talked about my love for Harry, Meghan, and their family who are now building their new life overseas. This is what King Charles III said, and I read into that. You're living on the west coast of America. We want nothing to do with you. Please stay there. Meghan nodded, her eyes narrowing thoughtfully. Interesting. Well, I did think it was interesting that Meghan comes over. She goes out there to sort of shake the hands of people. And let's be honest about it. Meghan and Harry made the Queen's last two years much more difficult than they needed to be. I mean, there's something galling about seeing them glad-handing with the mourners. Name me somebody else who caused more agita to the poor Queen in her last two years of life than those two, right? Nigel leaned in, his expression grave. Yeah, it was so disrespectful. It was so wrong in every way. But I'll tell you what's interesting. The Queen's coffin will arrive at Buckingham Palace in about two and a half hours' time, and there will be a military detachment, of course. There will be the King and the Queen Consort. There will be the Prince and Princess of Wales. But the Duke and Duchess of Sussex will not be there. And what this tells you, through the words King Charles used, through the very fact they will not be there to meet the Queen's body as it arrives in Buckingham Palace, and goodness me, what a somber, emotional moment that's going to be in two and a half hours. The fact they're not there tells you everything. He paused, letting the weight of his words sink in. The firm, as the royal family has known, have effectively excommunicated them because they know Harry will go ahead with this book. Do it to make money and do his best not just to damage the monarchy and his own father and brother, 
but he'll do it because he wants to damn the United Kingdom, the British around the world. I've never seen such disloyalty in all of my life. Quite what Meghan's done to him, how it's come to this, I simply don't know. Meghan's eyes flickered with a mix of frustration and disbelief. She was glad-handing with the mourners the other day, and it made news that a few of them refused to shake her hand. You can see it in the video. A couple of women just looked down or didn't extend the hand. And now you've got Meghan's followers on Twitter, and we're showing the video for the people who watch us on YouTube. The woman putting on her sunglasses avoids Meghan. Then there's a woman in a dark blue shirt with gray hair who clearly does not want to shake her hand. And now you've got all these people on Twitter accusing these women, wait for it, of racism. Racists because they... Nigel interjected, shaking his head. Do you know what? Are we getting slightly bored with all this? I mean you know this. I mean the use of this word. We should stop. We you know what? We should stop even worrying about it. It's become utterly meaningless. It's a substitute for any form of engagement or intelligent debate. And I think we've got to just stop worrying about all these attacks. They mean nothing. Meghan nodded in agreement, her expression resolute. What do you make of the Oprah thing? Because I will say, Oprah weighed in on Meghan and Harry today. I mean, she was sort of, she was in on ground zero of the racism accusation Meghan and Harry launched against the royal family, and now Oprah's calling for sort of a healing moment. Nigel sighed, his face betraying a hint of exasperation. Yeah, well, that is true, of course. I mean, there's barely a family on the planet where someone's not speaking about someone. I mean, that's just the way family is. Megan smiled slightly, acknowledging the truth in his words. Well, it's true. It's true. Nigel leaned forward, his eyes earnest. Very true. And then we all come together, you know. It's the uncle's funeral or whatever it is, and we all come together, and it is an opportunity for rapprochement to be made. There was a minor rapprochement when William reached out, and they went out, as you say, in Windsor and looked at the flowers and met some of the mourners there. But it has no long-term future if he's going to go ahead with this book. So, Oprah, sorry, I'm not with you at all. And can I just say also, she must be the worst interviewer on the planet. The idea that Oprah Winfrey is this big genius. Well, so what happened with that interview? Because the first half of it was with Meghan. Halfway through, Harry gets dragged in, directly contradicts some of the things that Meghan has said in the first half, and Winfrey didn't even pick up on it. So, I'm not particularly impressed with her ability to do interviews and to find out the truth. The conversation ended, leaving viewers with much to ponder. In the world of royal intrigue, where loyalty and betrayal danced hand in hand, the saga of Harry and Meghan continued to captivate and divide. Would Harry go through with his book? Only time would tell, but one thing was clear, the echoes of their choices would resonate for years to come. Let's hear your thoughts in the comment section. Remember to click the subscribe button and enable the bell icon as well as share and like the video for more in-depth stories like this. Thank you for watching. See you in our next video.